excited to see you again. Um, last week, if you remember, we learned about Palm Sunday, and this week we have an even more exciting lesson. Things are getting really exciting around here. Uh, speaking of exciting things, I don't know if you can see, but I have some party decorations still up in my house. My daughter turned five years old last week. If you watched the craft video last week, you got to meet her and see her help us make our palm branches. Um, but she turned five and we had a lot of fun. Even though we were at home, we still made cupcakes and we sang and we even put a tent up in our living room to just really have a good time and celebrate her turning five. On the Bible this week, we're gonna celebrate something even more exciting that happened thousands of years ago. Way more exciting than a birthday. Way more exciting than a big football game. Way more exciting than anything you could think of. Miss Amy has prepared a wonderful lesson to tell you all about it, and I think you're really going to like it. She did a fantastic job telling the story from the Bible, and I hope that you get to watch it and learn it and believe it in your heart. Let me pray for us before she gets started, and then I'll hand it over to Miss Amy. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate you and what you've done for us. And I just pray that um, everyone who's listening today um, will learn about you and um, would just treasure it in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, Through the Roof family. It's Miss Amy, and I am so excited to be able to share the story of Easter with you today. So, this is our Bible lesson that you can print out and read at home. I'm going to tell it to you right now, though. It comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. This is my Bible that I have marked to Matthew 28, 1 through 10. And I've got some pictures for you to go with the story. At dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And you see, the sun's just coming up. It's early in the morning. And here's Mary Magdalene and the other Mary coming to look at the tomb. The tomb is where they have buried the body of Jesus because they have just crucified Jesus. They've just killed him. He was a perfect man who came and lived on the earth and our God at the same time. And he made, had no sin in his life, but they treated him like a criminal and they killed him and they buried him inside and put his body inside this tomb. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone. Can you shake like there's an earthquake going on? Here's the angel, and this rock is super heavy. You would not be able to lift this rock by yourself, this big, heavy stone, but the angel just moves it away, no problem. And they look inside, and there, Jesus is gone. The tomb is empty. The guards were so afraid of the angel that they shook. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. For I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. Go quickly and tell his disciples. Jesus is alive. So here are the guards. They have people guarding the tomb to make sure Jesus' body, nothing happened to his body. But he, is, he rose and he's no longer in the tomb. And so they are to go and run and tell the disciples, tell Jesus' friends, all of his followers. So the woman, the women hurried away from the tomb and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my disciples that they will see me soon. So here is Jesus alive. They could not kill Jesus. Jesus is our God, and he rose from the dead. <clears throat> and so he tells them to go and tell his disciples, his friends, and his followers that he is alive and he will see them soon. That is our story today. That is the story of Easter.
So for Easter, we talk a lot about the cross because Jesus, they nailed Jesus to a cross and they killed him. Even though he lived a perfect life, they treated him like a criminal. And that's not where the story ends though. Jesus comes and he rises back to life and he saves us from all of our sins. His doing this has saved us from our sins. If we ask for his forgiveness, he will forgive our sins and he will give us eternal life to join him. Now he's in heaven with our God. Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God. <clears throat> so what I thought would be fun, this is a little statue of Jesus and he had to carry his cross that they were gonna crucify him on all the way to the hill where they crucified him. <clears throat> so a lot of us have crosses all around our house, decorating our house <clears throat> to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made so that we can go to heaven and that we can have our sins forgiven if we trust in him and believe in the, his Easter story. And so we are going to see how many crosses you can find in your home. We're going to go on a cross scavenger hunt. So we're going to go in my home and find a few. And then you can pause the video if you want, and you can go on a scavenger hunt in your house and find crosses in your house. Okay, here we go. Well, this one is one cross we have in our house. Then, oh, look here. I have one that I put on top of the piano for decoration. We'll walk down the hall. Oh, here I see another one. This is a little paperweight someone gave me that's a, in the shape of a cross. Oh, and look at this. This is a picture that my son made and, and it's another picture of a cross and it even says he is risen. So there, and I'm even wearing a cross. You know where I found a lot of crosses in my house? Was in my jewelry box because a lot, a lot of people will wear crosses too. So you might want to look in your mama's jewelry box. All right, let's go back to the table. All right, so I searched, I'm not gonna take you all through my house because it's kind of messy, but I searched all through my house and I found 18 crosses in my house. So I want you to go through your house and see how many crosses you can find. <clears throat> and you could even post to Facebook how many crosses you found on the Through the Roof page so that we can see who can find the most crosses in their house. That might be fun. Okay, so our Bible verse this week is Jesus is alive, which comes from Matthew 28, verse 7. So that's a very important verse. Jesus is alive. That's what Easter is all about. Jesus is still alive, he's in heaven, but he still is with us each and every day. He is present with us and can be alive in our lives. All right, so also you could print out at home this handout that has our Bible verse on it. And you could do this several ways if you wanted to. They ask you to write the words yourself in the boxes. <clears throat> So you write, it starts here with alive Jesus is, but that's not in the right order. You're supposed to put them in the right order by matching up the boxes. You write, you put Jesus is alive like this. You could write it out like this if you wanted. And if you are able to do some writing, I've seen some excellent writing in the Meadow class where I teach. Or if you want a simpler way, you could also cut out the pieces and then you could just you could lay them on top simple like that and you could try and say it with your mom and dad Jesus is alive you could glue them down or we also in the meadow room we really like using glue dots because they make things very easy then it's just kind of like sticking a sticker down so if you have glue dots in your house, you could use glue dots. <clears throat> or another possibility is that you could use it instead as part of our craft that I'm gonna show you. So 
Let's put the verse aside. Remember, Jesus is alive. And let's get out our craft. Let's see, so your mom or your dad or even maybe one of your siblings can help you with this. We're gonna have a cross just like this that you can print out on your computer. If you have thicker paper, you might wanna do thicker paper. If you have colored paper, you can print it out on colored paper, whatever you have in your home. <clears throat> and we're gonna decorate these crosses for Easter. And I'm gonna give you some ideas of how you can decorate it. All right, first idea is in our room, the meadow room, we like, we often like to use things. This would be a very easy way to decorate your cross. First of all, you could paste, like I said, the Bible verse, Jesus is alive. You could paste that on your cross. <clears throat> then you could decorate it. And my suggestion is we in the meadow really like stickers. Stickers are easy to peel off and to put on without any help. Or sometimes pages can be hard and you might need some help peeling off the stickers. I also really like colored pencils and recommend colored pencils for doing coloring. <clears throat> Another thing we use a lot in the Meadow class is we use stampers. And I don't know if you have any, of, any stamps at home, but that's also another great thing you could do to decorate your cross. So here's just an example I made, and I cut out my cross. You don't have to cut out your cross if you don't want to. I took a hole punch and I put a ribbon on it so that I could hang it on a door or, you know, hang it on my wrist, whatever you want to do with it. It is your, pro it is your project and you can do whatever you want. <clears throat> I have another idea as well. For some people, if you want a more advanced craft, you could do a cross like this. I've seen these on Pinterest a lot lately and they are so fun. <clears throat> you, it makes it look kind of like a stained glass and no two would look exactly alike, just like Jesus has made us all unique with our own talents and our own special qualities. No two crosses would look alike because you would color it different colors and you make your lines different ways. But, um, if you're very artistic, you might like to do something more fancy like this. And I wrote, I wrote on there, instead of gluing it on there, I wrote the verse on there, Jesus is alive. So let me just show you a little bit about how I did that, in case you want to do it at home. I just took my ruler and a black marker, and I just made lines any which way. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. That's what makes it special and makes it unique to you. And then I used colored pencils to color in the different boxes. You could use watercolors. You could use whatever you want to use to color it in. <clears throat> but those are just some fun ideas of how you could decorate your cross. Now, you may have some cool crafting supplies at home that you want to use that I did not use. You may have sequins or all sorts of fun things to use. You do whatever you want with your cross. And again, if you wanted to take a picture of what you did of your craft and put it online at Facebook on our Through the Roof page, that would be awesome. I would love to see it. <clears throat> you can, you don't have to cut it out. Like I didn't cut this one out. You could tape it up in your window for everyone to see that drove by. You could tape it, <clears throat> put it on the refrigerator. You can do whatever you want with your craft. All right, then lastly, we're going to do a prayer together. Let me put the craft away and get out the prayer. It's kind of a fun prayer, but also a fun prayer, but also a very serious prayer at the same time. <clears throat> God wants us all, if we, have the, <laughs> if we have the words, he wants us all to say this to him. And it's a very important prayer but we're gonna use jelly beans to help us. <clears throat> and so it's called the jelly bean prayer. So if you have jelly beans at your house, like maybe the Easter Bunny brought you a basket of jelly beans today. 
if you have some jelly beans, you could go, you could pause right now in the video. You could go get your jelly beans. You could come back to the table and do this with me. If you don't, you could even get your colored pencils and you could pull out the colors that we're pulling out by just using your colored pencils. So, all right, here we go. First, I am going to find a black jelly bean. I see lots of black jelly beans <clears throat> here, probably because there's lots of sin in our life. This black jelly bean is for our sin, the wrong things that we have done. We are all human and we have all made mistakes. Jesus was perfect, but we have all made mistakes. <clears throat> so we can pray to God for him to forgive our mistakes. We can ask him his forgiveness and say, will you please forgive all the sin that I have in my life? I am a sinner. That's step one to this very important prayer. All right, I'll put that black one there. All right, next, I'm gonna look for a red jelly bean. All right, here is a red jelly bean. Red is for Jesus' blood that he shed for everyone. On the cross, when they crucified him, they nailed him to a cross and he bled and he had, he had a lot of pain. He gave up his life for us so that we can go to heaven and join him in heaven. And so that's what this red jelly bean is for. And, that's, and we are, as, as Christians, we believe in this story of what happened to Jesus. Some people do not believe this story, but we as Christians do believe in this story. And then a white. Can you find a white jelly bean like me? All right. The white jelly bean is for a clean heart when in Jesus we believe. So if we tell Jesus that we believe this story, that he was killed on a cross, and that he rose again, and that he's in heaven, and that our sins, if we tell him we are sinners and we want your forgiveness, that our sins can be believed, <clears throat> our sins can be forgiven, and the <clears throat> and our hearts can be made clean. We can be made clean because of what Jesus did. All right, next, a gold jelly bean. It's really yellow. Kind of yellow but I like it for gold because what it says for the gold jelly bean is that the gold is for the streets and heavens promised when Jesus when we receive Jesus <clears throat> and so this one represents heaven and our eternal life that we gain when we put our trust in him which is so important and gives us such hope that even when things are going not going well here on earth, that we have a perfect life to look forward to in heaven. All right. This one, I believe, is the last one, a green one. The green M&M, &M, you could use M&Ms if you want. The green jelly bean is for growing. Like trees grow and grass grows. Green means life growing. So, when you ask Jesus into your heart and you say, I believe in the story of Easter and I believe that you will forgive my sins and make me pure, <clears throat> you will still have to grow. You won't automatically be a perfect person. No one's going to be a perfect person here on earth besides Jesus when he came. And so we are constantly growing to be more like him each and every day. That's what the green one is for. All right, so put your trust in Jesus. Give your life a brand new start is what this prayer is showing us. So let's just, we'll pray a quick prayer and we will be done. Um, thank you so much for, if you are watching today, and I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Easter with your family. And I know that we are stuck inside. We can still go outside in our yards in the neighborhood but may this be our best easter yet that we're able to spend so much time studying your word studying the word of god and with our families who we love so here we go final prayer lord jesus we thank you so much for the story of easter lord 
we believe that you came to earth, that you lived a perfect life, Lord Jesus, and that you were died on a cross, Lord, that we might have our sins forgiven, Lord, and our <clears throat> lives washed clean. Not that we deserve that, Lord, but you made that sacrifice for us, Lord. And we don't just believe that the story ended with the cross, Lord. We believe that you rose from the dead, Lord, and that you are now in heaven and that we have <clears throat> can have eternal life with you, Lord, if we give our hearts to you and confess our sins. And just thank you so much for that blessing. And we love you. And we pray for the coronavirus that it would clear away quickly, Lord. It's in your son's Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.